This is the Barbecue Central Show Archives. The Barbecue Central Show airs live each Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and is brought to you by the Barbecue Guru, makers of automatic pit temperature control devices and a host of other products that make your barbecue and grilling life easier. Visit them online at the bbqguru.com or call them 800-288-GURU and by Big Papa Smokers creators of fabulous rubs online retailer of grills accessories apparel and creators of their own barbecue contest visit them online at bigpapasmokers.com and by Butcher Barbecue creators of injections and rubs sweeping the nation doing well in competitions and in the backyard you can visit them at Butcher bbq.com and by steven defranco jewelers official jeweler of the barbecue central show call 440-943-2700 and use key term barbecue brother when you talk to steve or visit them online at steven defranco.com and by green mountain grills one of the best pellet grills you can get on the market today varying sizes not only for your capacity of cooking but for your budget as well, visit GreenMountainGrills.com for more information. And by El Diablo Mustard. Looking for a little bit of heat and flavor and regular old yellow mustard? El Diablo has you covered. Six different flavors to choose from currently, and you can find them at ElDiabloMustard.com. And by CookingPellets.com. Have a pellet-driven cooker? Why not try out some of the best pellets on the market? And will not void any of your warranties, by the way. CookingPellets.com. Dot com is the website. And by CookShack, a premier manufacturer of electric and pellet-driven cookers, giving barbecue classes located in Ponca City, Oklahoma. Always running some kind of a special deal. Check them out at CookShack.com. Hi, I'm Johnny Dam, host of the Damage Report radio show. When I'm not falling in love with the First Amendment all over again, I like to sit back, relax, and rub my meat to the Barbecue Central show. And now your host, Greg Rempe. Go, Greg. Yeah. Rub that meat. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Good evening and welcome to the Really Big Barbecue Central Show. This is the show that talks about all things important to the world of barbecue and grilling. I broadcast live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. It's the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I am your program host, Greg Rampey. And I am happy to have you aboard here on your Tuesday. If you see fit to jump in on the show tonight, more than happy to have you. It's a phone call away, 216-220-0966. You can also email the show at any point you see fit by using this email address, greg with one G, G-R-E-G, at the BBQ Central Show.com, right down there on the lower third. Anything else you want to find out about the show? You can always check at the main website, thebbqcentralshow.com. And here's what's happening a little bit later in the show, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Coming up in about 12 minutes from now, the first Tuesday of every month for now, low these many months in a row, finds us checking in, getting our monthly barbecue checkup with a good doctor, newly, how, how do you say it properly? Uh, Hall of Fame elect Dr. Barbecue Ray Lampy will be joining us. 914. Then at 935, a first time guest guest on the show, not a first time caller, definitely not a first time listener. Somebody that I would put up in the annals of all time central light in the history of the earth and pitmaster of the basic barbecue team now heading to the finals in Bentonville, Arkansas for the same series. Patrick Paquette will be joining us here at 935. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen. And then we'll move to the second hour. Uh, reloading from last week because I have terrible scheduling issues. A man who has invented a grill that has, much like this show, as a passion for me. His passion is grills, and specifically hot box grills, and on to talk about it, none other than the creator of hot box grills, Dave Benjamin, will be joining us at 1014. And then helping me close the show out. I think we missed him last month. We had him the month before that. He is the official Barbecue Central Sauce and Rub Reviewer and Chili Head Extraordinaire. Scott Roberts joining us. So we have a ton to get to. The uh, traditional format of the show has reemerged for this week and next week, and then we will round out the competition barbecue roundtable with a chicken. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is me, El Smokebo, coming to you live from the Institute of Advanced Barbecue Studies. Uh, that is I, El Smokebo, competition roundtable in two weeks' time. Uh, buy my stuff, ladies and gentlemen, buy my stuff. So, never fear, we're not forgetting the very last... Don't, don't, we're not forgetting the last meat. We don't think any less of chicken. Oh, it's dangerous and pesky. Uh, we will have three of the, we'll uh, scratch that from the record. We will have the top three chicken cooks in the country talking about chicken start to finish and everything in between. So uh, there you go. Uh, so look forward to that. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Facebook it, tweet it. Reddit it, however you do the social media. Let everybody know the show's on. The BBQ Central Show.com is the main website. Outdoor Cooking Channel.com, video syndication partner of the show for years. You can get it on Roku. Don't forget, you can subscribe to iTunes for audio replays of the show. That's the way it's most consumed. Uh, my YouTube channel has video replays. Outdoor Cooking Channel has replays as well. And of course, uh, the main website that I just mentioned, the BBQ Central Show.com. Uh, again, no reason you should ever miss anything on the show, ever. All right, let's get it right out in the open. Never let it be said that I do not admit my own mistakes. However, I will get out in front of this one. But the emails were fast and furious after this afternoon's newsletter made its way out to the thousand people that are subscribed to it. And no less than 50 or 60 people couldn't wait to fire off an email because... Everybody's perf, but man, you people can't wait to jump all over someone when a mistake is made, right? Of course. I didn't mean to put Ray Lampy's new name, last name on my newsletter incorrectly. I didn't do that on purpose. I've written his last name several hundred times over the last seven years. So, of course, I didn't mean to put Ray R. Uh, R-A-Y-L-A-M, and then I didn't include the P and then E at the end. Well, you take the P out of Lampy and you have lame. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Nothing says impressing a guest who shows up every month and is one of the most recognizable names in barbecue by intentionally leaving a letter out so you can say name, uh, lame. No. No, no, no. Of course, I respect the time and the information that Ray shares with the show. He's a Hall of Famer, and uh, obviously I didn't do that on purpose. But thank you to everyone for pointing that out literally seconds after the newsletter was released. So hilarious. <laughs> so fun. Must be nice living lives of perfection out there. Douche bags. Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid. I got an email from Cliff over the weekend. Cliff uh, writes, Hey Greg, I'm entering KCBS competition for the second time this year. The company I now work for, Metro Appliances and more... 
plug for Metro Appliances, is footing the bill or, well, it wouldn't be possible. I've competed in Ween, Ar- Arkansas, and took 14th out of 49 teams, got a fourth place, uh, fourth place pork call. I am competing in Jonesboro, Arkansas at the end of this month, and I was asking the guy in charge about participation this year. He told me they were expecting a decline, but would still have 60 to 70 teams. This was making me wonder about the fate of competition barbecue in general. Are you seeing a general decline in participation across the country? Do you think Sam's Club, with their $50,000 purse, has helped or hurt the $10,000 competitions? I don't know that all the TV shows had to help some, but if everyone is like me, they aren't paying all of the cost of doing competitions out of pocket. I am about to put the skills learned via the forum to the test. Have been watching your show via YouTube these days. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you, Cliff, for writing it. Um, let me uh, take some items here off of your email just for reaction. Uh, am I seeing a general decline in participation off the country? I don't keep tabs on you know growth. That's not me. That's KCBS. That's Florida Barbecue Association. You know, that's all the other sanctioning bodies. Uh, they would have a better idea of how they're seeing. You know, I have seen more cancellations of competitions that I have this year, and I'm not necessarily looking for it more than I have been in years past, but I've seen a lot of competitions go by the wayside. Um, do I think Sam's Club is hurting more than helping? Absolutely not. I think uh, if Sam's Club wants to pony up fat cash for people to win, have three good cooks and the opportunity to win $50,000 or more overall in prize money, I think it's absolutely fabulous. Uh, Do I think that there's probably some other competitions that might be around a Sam's Club event that don't get pulled now because they used to? Sure. That's just going to happen. It's called competition. Inherently, things were going to, to come along that are new. They might be a little bit more attractive than what you have going on. And if you've been steadfastly holding to whatever it is you've been doing over the last 10 or 15 years, guess what? It's not going to work out for you. You've got to find different ways to draw the Sam's Club away from the Sam's Club local or regional or whatever you have going on. More local events, I would imagine that it hurts. Um, and I think the cost of competition barbecue is uh, something that might need to be looked at 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 all levels but again that's probably being pushed more from the competitor side of thing than uh, anybody else nobody is uh saying you have to buy all the expensive meat and the expensive cookers and all this other stuff i mean that's just the way the sport is going more on that thanks for writing in cliff but first let me talk to you about big papa smokers the one-stop shop for anyone interested in barbecue featuring a comprehensive selection of all american made grills Spices, sauces, accessories, even a kit that gives you everything you need to make a world-class smoker out of a 55-gallon drum. Big Papa Smokers has made a name for itself by making an award-winning line of championship rubs. Their rubs have won almost every major competition barbecue event, including the 2012 and 13 World Series of Barbecue in Kansas City, the 2012 Jack Daniels Invitational, the 2013 Kingsford Challenge, and the 2014 Houston Livestock and Rodeo, plus many more to come on the horizon. BPS also banded together with fellow California rub maker Simply Marvelous Barbecue to form what has now become known as the West Coast Offense. Defying conventional wisdom, these two California rub-based makers have cornered the market on competitive barbecue and begun to redefine the flavor profile that competitive cooks from across the country have begun to aim for. They've even created two of their own unique competitions, King of the Smoker, which is a best of the best in barbecue, head-to-head in a back-to-basics competition. No pellet cookers, no pit minders, contestants just allowed to use charcoal wood and their wits to win one of the most high-stakes barbecue competitions around. And then, of course, the other one, the guinea pig, which is a cost-controlled competition that helps bring in newcomers to competitive barbecue. It also features prize distribution all the way down to 10th place in each category, which helps provide incentive to get new competitors into the world of barbecue. Fantastic concept, Cliff, if you're taking notes. On top of all of that, Big Papa has created a unique brand ambassador program, the BPS Elite Team. Featuring 15 of the best competition teams in the country, working together to promote camaraderie competition barbecue and to benefit children's charities across the U.S. Let's sum it up. Keep in mind that BPS has done this within four years of being in business, turning the competition barbecue world on its head, creating their own unique competitions, becoming a staple of a nationwide barbecue chain, 
and benefiting children's charities across the United States. It's just the beginning for Big Papa Smokers. Thanks to Sterling Ball and the gang over there for their support of this show. We'll have Sterling on here in a couple weeks, I believe. So there you go. We're coming back with the good doctor, Ray Lampy for Ask Dr. Barbecue right after this. Stick around. Be right back. Live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back. 216-220-0966. That's the email. Gre- uh, no, that's the phone number. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. That's the email. You want to jump in tonight? You have a question for Ray Lampy? Drop it in. We'll get to it tonight. Lots of good questions to talk to Ray about here. But if you are interested, shoot him my way. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. And uh, stick around here for this great introduction that I have. you got questions about barbecue or grilling, maybe as a hobby or even a business, looking to get an expert's point of view, why not ask Dr. Barbecue? You can submit your questions by clicking on the Ask Dr. Barbecue tab on the website. The doctor is in. Here's Ray Lampy with his nurse, Greg Rempe. Dr. Barbecue. And there he is, Ray Lampy, ladies and gentlemen. Yes! Ray, how are you? Uh-oh. I don't have you. I see oh, oh, now I got you. All right, there we go. Sorry about that. Ray looking dapper as always. Um, you, may, is it my keen sense of investigation, or do you have like a new shed, uh, set of stainless steel like shelves behind you, or have they always been there? It's always there, probably just the camera moved or something. Oh, all right. Well, good enough. Uh, Ray, it's been a, believe it or not, it's been a month since we've had you on the last time. Uh, what is new, improved, unimproved uh, in the world of Dr. Barbecue as it sits right now? Um, I'm just, it's ball to the wall now, man. I mean, we just started the Coke Zero cookoff support kickoff thing, and it's that's 10 out of the next 14 weeks. And in the American Royal Eggtoberfest and World Food Championship, I got one week off out of the next 14. So it's going to be a busy time of year. Uh, for the folks that maybe didn't hear our conversations last week, or last week, last year when you were doing the whole cook-off before kickoff thing, uh, can you give us just a little uh, background about that? Yeah, it's a little different this year. Uh, last year we spent a lot of time out in front of Sam's Club. This time we're going out to tailgates at the game. But here's the deal. You go to cook-off before kickoff, and you can enter, and we're going to – they send out to uh, 10 teams every week in different markets a tailgating package. And one team is going to be in the city where we are. They're going to get a $150 Sam's gift card. Then you go buy a bunch of stuff, and we're going to come to your tailgate and take a bunch of video and stuff. And then at the end of the season, all those teams go in the hat, and somebody wins $5,000 and two tickets to any bowl game. Any but, bowl game? Yeah, I guess. I don't know how they're going wow. to handle that. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I guess they want to make it that way so that you can go where your team is. Yeah, that's right. Plus uh, five grand ain't too shabby. I'll take that. I'll take that over the football tickets. Yeah, you can have some fun. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to ask you about uh, was the online uh, barbecue class. That's still going strong for you? Yeah, it is. It's doing real well, actually. Uh, yeah, it's uh, real happy with that. It's, uh, and, and the reviews have all been good. The, all the interaction has been really good. It's kind of cool. People are sending me pictures of, like, good stuff they're cooking. They're all real happy. So online bbqclass.com. It's, uh, it's sort of crafty, the website. But if you book it through my website, I get a few extra dollars. It costs the same. And I get a few extra dollars. All right, so let's go right into the questions here. And, of course, uh, my email is not firing up as uh, I figured it would when it counts. Uh, this one is from uh, Blake Moody, and uh, he's like, Greg, I have a question for Ray on the show tonight. Uh, I'm sure Ray has been to hundreds, of, maybe thousands, of barbecue joints. What is his impression of barbecue cooked on a wood-burning pit versus a gas oven, for instance, Southern Pride or Old Hickory or you know something like that? 
I have no idea what the health consequences are, but I imagine that wood has to be better than gas. Just wondered what he thinks if one is better than the other. Well, I, I'm not a real doctor, so I can't address the whole health issue of it. What? Certainly. You're not a real <laughs> doctor? I never oh. Oh, uh, but, you know, I, yeah, I, I don't think I've been to a thousand yet, but I've certainly been to hundreds of barbecue restaurants. I, you know, it seems to me the guys that are meticulously cooking with wood are creating really good food. I was just in Dallas, and I ate at a place called the Pecan Lot. Uh, it's becoming very famous, a really cool place. Uh, it, it started in a flea market, and they three months ago opened this big, beautiful place. And just the nicest damn people, and and uh, it's really good. And they're cooking with all wood. They got big, wide, wide open. You know, you're going to cook with wood. You got to have big airflow, and you got to watch what you're doing, and you got to know what's going on. It's really a big commitment. For most restaurants, it's not practical, and, and the gas cookers solve that problem. So I don't hate them. Um, you know, the truth is there's a lot of mediocre barbecue out there right now, and, and most of it's being cooked on Southern Prides and Old Hickories. doesn't mean the cooker's bad. It means people just don't give a shit. They're serving mediocre barbecue. People buy it, so they're reasonably okay with it. So I don't necessarily think the cookers are to blame because there's places cooking really good food over on Old Hickory. Leanne in Chicago, at Chicago Q, they're cooking really good food. And actually in Chicago also smoked berry. They're smoke, they're cooking really good barbecue on old hickories and southern fried. So you can do it. You just gotta know what you're doing and you gotta you gotta want to. Um and on the other hand, you can cook really bad barbecue on a wood burner too. If those guys don't know what they're doing and you just keep chucking logs in and, and you don't get the right airflow, you, you know, that could be bad too. So I, I'm not that biased about your kit. I don't want to eat the food. Yeah, I think uh Two things on that. Um, I've had really good barbecue over visibly wood burning pits, which has been great. I've, as you have had, I've had incredibly not great wood burned uh, barbecue, and vice versa. It's been good on gas, and it's been not good on gas. Uh, the thing that I am continually perturbed about, and it's almost like a cycle that just continues to to regenerate itself every year, is you have uh, average barbecue joints that are looking to half ass the work figure out a way to do it easily, cost-effectively, most profit uh, return or, or return on the investment, per se. And then you have people that are buying it, and they they don't they either don't know any different, they've never been educated on what a good barbecue would taste like. For, so they think it's they're happy as a pig and shit. So they're continuing to eat the bad stuff, saying how great it is. This guy's happy for doing mediocre work and getting a lot of profit. Uh, it's almost like, uh, you know, ribs in, in, in the general consuming public. If, if it falls off the bone, if it's meat soup, that's the best rib I've ever had. And it's just not the case. And it doesn't seem to find a way to resolve itself. Yeah, I, it, it's a shame, actually. But you're right. That mediocre food. Well, you know, people like places like Applebee's and Chili's because it's very familiar. The service is good. You know, we, we, we will on this, this tailgate tour, we'll eat in a lot of different restaurants. And Beth, who travels with me, and Gail uh, are, you know, they're foodies too. So we will go find. I mean, we ate everything from Papa Papa Dough to Gat Station Tacos that somebody told us about this week. And we'll do that, you know. And and we will find good food and bad food in both places. But what what you'll find is the chain restaurants. The service is tight. Everything looks the same. The bathrooms in the same place. And people like that stuff. It's a shame, but they like that mediocre kind of. You know, I mean, when you go to these funky barbecue restaurants, you got to wait in line or eating tacos at the gas station is it's almost like risky business. You yeah. might get sick, but but I'm, I'm up for that adventure. You know, a lot of people are not. They just want that, you know, three quarters effort and, and they're happy with it. And I hate to see it crawling into barbecue, but it's certainly there. In regards to the waiting and the line stuff, and it really seems to be most prevalent or you at least you hear about it more in the texas area especially in austin you get to franklin's or you know some of these other places uh, have you eaten at franklin's barbecue ray i haven't had a chance no i look forward to going um everybody i know that's ever been there says the food really is that good now it's a fucking brisket how good can it be i don't know let me ask you a question i mean you are ray lampy hall of famer to be inducted this year w will you wait in a four-hour line to eat brisket to see if it's really that good? or I mean, like, if it were me, I would call Aaron Franklin on the cell phone directly and say, hey, 
I'm coming in town. I'm going to sneak through the back, and I'm not waiting in that freaking line. Or I'm just not coming. I mean, it can't be worth four hours, right? I'm not waiting in line. I can promise oh you that. Oh, my God. I, I'd really like to try the food. If there's a way I can sneak in the back door, I'll do it. Yeah. I hate to do that to people, but, I, I'm, yeah, I, I, you know, it can't be that good. I bet, you know, people enjoy the whole adventure. There was a, in New Orleans, back in the day, Cape Paul when it was such a famous restaurant, that was what people would do. You know, they'd line up and they'd drink in the line until it was time to go in. And I think that's what they do at Franklin, too. And, and you know, that's all good. But I'm old, man. I'm not. I ain't standing in the three up line. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Aaron will let me slide in the back. So. I, th- I think at this point it's like badge of courage. You can say you waited in the line and there's a romance to it. And I was talking to a pair of dudes that have a barbecue food truck up here in Seatown over the weekend, and they just went on and on about it was life-changing brisket, and they waited four hours, and all I was thinking was like, wow, that's a lot of time to wait. I have yet to see somebody wait in line for four hours and say it wasn't brisket. Yeah, good. right. It's always going to be the best brisket. Yeah, because you don't want to be the sucker that says, eh, I wasted my time. But, they're, you know, the way to serve good brisket is keep serving it, yep. and that's what they do. You know what I mean? They got the line. They just, when it's gone, it's gone. Um, Arthur Bryant's always was like that to me. When it's busy, the brisket's really good because, there, it doesn't sit around at all. Uh, there's a place over in in, uh, in Orlando called Four Rivers. He's got a few of them now. A guy named John Rivers. Good guy. Get a lot of attention. And he's uh, what he did is, and he, the way he set up his barbecue restaurant, you wait in the line, and when you get there, you the first thing you see is a guy with a knife and a brisket. And then there's the line. And most of the food's made in the kitchen right behind there. But the brisket's right there with the guy with the knife. Well, guess what everybody orders? Yeah. The, and that's a smart move because everybody orders the brisket. You keep the brisket moving. That's how you serve good brisket. Yeah. Ray Lampy joining us here on the show for the monthly Ask Dr. Barbecue uh, segment. If you have a question, ask drbbq.com. Uh, you can also visit Ray's own website, drbbq.com. All right, so uh, we wrap that one up. Let's move on to a question I got from Bill in New York. And it says, Ray, I've been looking at ceramic cookers, but the price tag scares me a little bit. I know you're a big green egg guy, but uh, I couldn't. Couldn't I buy a less expensive uh, smoker and also a cheaper gas grill and have two pieces versus one ceramic unit? What's your take? Well, I work for Big Green Egg. What do you think I'm going to say? Uh, but I'll tell you my honest opinion. Big Green Egg's been around for 35 years. We're not going. Anywhere. We are the, the clear leader in this segment. You know, you can online, you can find people that will tell you about every other thing. There's a lot of contrarians. We're the clear leader in this, in this segment. Uh, if you... In five years, if there's a problem with your big green egg, you'll be able to find me. You'll be able to find the people there. They're going to fix it for you. They're going to take care of it. In 10 years, they're going to be there. In 20 years, they're going to be there. I don't know about these other guys. I have no idea. Are they going to be there? Probably, maybe. Who knows? What are their cookers going to look like? We have that big track record. Now, as far as the price, you know, people don't think anything of spending a 1000 bucks for a gas grill. Matter of fact, they're proud. Because they buy the fancier, shiny object one, the biggest one they can find. Guy spends three grand on his gas grill. He's bragging about it. Yeah. But a charcoal grill, people want to cheap out. They think everything should cost seventy nine bucks. Just spend a thousand bucks. You'll on a big green egg. You'll never regret it. You'll never need another one. Uh, it'll have you know. You'll be giving it to your kids when when you retire when you're too old to cook. It just you know it, it's it's a long time investment. Quit being so cheap. Just buy the thing and don't buy a cheap gas grill. Talk about a piece of crap. What would you buy that for? Just buy an egg and you'll you'll never be mad. Try to find somebody that has a big green egg that's mad. No. Good luck with that. You know, trying to find like uh, trying to find somebody that had that waited for four hours for Franklin's brisket and said it was bad. You're not going to have. That's right. Uh, the other well, on Craigslist. The only thing you'll find on Craigslist typically is a medium because the guy cheaped out, bought the medium, and he wanted a large. Right. Um, that's typically what you find. What I like about – well, Big Green Egg is, uh, as you said, a leader in the segment. Um, I have no cat in that fight. Um, but in regards to just ceramic cookers in general, and the Big Green Egg I like because – uh, inherently, barbecue guys are, I mean, look behind you, you know, gadget guys and uh, tech guys. And, you know, I, I need to get every little thing for my cooker that I can possibly get. And Big Green Ed has like 50 billion different things that you can get for it, right? Um, but in a lot of the other competitive ceramic cookers have, you know, gadgets that are uh, slowly building up uh, to follow suit. However, the thing that I like most about that style of cooker is, and why I would tell this guy, Buy a big green egg if you're really worried about, you know, the saying, buy the best, only cry once. 
Um, you know, that holds true with a lot of stuff in barbecue. A lot of stuff, I guess, in life in general, but especially barbecue. You buy the cheap stuff, you're going to become disenchanted, and then you're out of it. You buy a big green egg, you're going to lay out, you know, a decent amount of money for it. But as you said, you got all the warranty, you got the support behind it, but you're getting those two cookers in one unit. So unless you're just somebody that has to have two pieces... Uh, this one gives you the ability to slow smoke at a very low temperature for hours and hours on end, and it also will ramp right up to 750, 800 degrees, so you can do the high heat grilling as well. I cooked a slab of spare ribs yesterday for dinner on the egg. I have one, I have two eggs in my yard. I rarely use the medium one. I almost always just use the large one. It's all I have in my yard. And I smoked a slab of ribs yesterday for about four or five hours. They were really good. And today I just cooked a two-pound porterhouse on the same egg. There's nothing else besides a ceramic cooker that can do that and do both so well. Um, and, and it's a good pizza oven, too. The diversity is really my favorite thing about it. But, the, I mean, the quality and, and it's just, no, people don't understand. They, you know, they all, it's kind of like me. I was, I was cheaping out on a thermopen. I wouldn't buy a thermopen. I was cooking next <laughs> to the Dizzy Pig guys one day at the American Royal. And I kept bar borrowing theirs and they were giving me shit because I was too cheap to buy one. And I went home and bought one and it's the greatest hundred bucks I ever spent. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ray Lampy joining us here on the show. Uh, next question is from Jim in Oklahoma. Ray, what's your favorite region of barbecue and why? And uh, he's listing out, you know, the, uh, the four faithful, Texas, KC, Memphis, and the Carolinas. Well, first of all, it's not that simple. Don't believe, you know, go, go to these places, go see them. Texas, you really think, you know how big Texas is. You really think everything in Texas is the same. I mean, it's just not. It, um, and, you know, the Carolinas, what's about the Carolina? Pulled pork with coleslaw, right? Well, it's not, though. When you go there, the pork is chopped into, into mush. And there's coleslaw on it, but there's also coleslaw. If you go to Big Bob Gibson's in Alabama, where everybody wants to talk about the white barbecue sauce, be careful because they're going to put coleslaw on your barbecue sandwich because that's how they serve it there. If you go to Memphis and order a barbecue sandwich, you're going to get pulled pork with coleslaw on top of it. It's just not that simple, all these regions. Uh, now, my personal preference, I, I man, I like the Texas places. It's just when you go to Lockhart, man, there's just nothing like it. Or Louis Mueller's over at Taylor. These places, literally, the door's been open for 100 years in the same place. Um, and they just don't even think about switching to a gas cooker. They cook on these built-in brick pits, and that's just what they do. And, and it's just so genuine and so authentic. And, and I, it, it, I don't know how else to describe it. So that's probably my favorite. Um, it, but, you know, like I always say, barbecue is about so much more than the food. Don't get hung up on the food. The culture is just Amazing. Now we, I ate in 25 barbecue restaurants in North Carolina in a week one time with Dave oh. DeWitt, the, the guy that, from Fiery Foods yep. Show, and uh, we we were disappointed in the the history. We could not find. I didn't find a hundred year old restaurant in North Carolina. I kept hearing it was the birthplace of barbecue. The you know, best we could find was a picture in Lexington of some guys cooking some shoulders in the 30s. Now that's you know Louis Mueller has been open for. 30 years by then. Uh, so and Arthur Bryant. So I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, Carolina is probably not my favorite. I do appreciate it. You know, the pork that's the way they serve it. I, I like it, but it's not my favorite Kansas city. I have great attachment to, cause I have spent so much time there. Um, but at the end of the day, if I was going to take you somewhere for just a few days, I'd take you to Texas. Uh, all right, uh, last question here. Uh, we got a couple minutes left, and this I'm debating which one I want to ask because one could be a loaded question. Uh, but I'll go ahead and throw caution to the wind. Uh, this is from Rich in Indiana. Ray, I've I have a cookbook in me, and I think I know what I want to do. However, I would like your guidance on what steps I should take to get it in the hands of a publisher. Most publishers want you to have an agent, so let's start there. Um, you, you're going to need to probably find an agent. Go look at publisher websites, and a lot of them will say, you know, we don't accept submissions from authors. They want – basically what the agents do is filter it all out. They, uh, you know, they, they will cut through the bullshit. If, you, if your idea is not good or you're not capable of writing that book, the agent probably won't bother with you. And if enough agents say no, um, sorry, but you might, you might not be a real project for you. Um, and there's also self-publishing, but – I can tell you we're not getting rich on cookbooks. The only people getting rich on cookbooks are on the Food Network. Yeah, right. Uh, I was going to say, as far as the uh, the ebooks have become very popular, the self-publishing, as you had mentioned, 
Uh, is that like, uh, you know, me hosting a radio show on the Internet and saying I have a radio show, but it's really not uh, kind of a thing? Or what's your take on the self published Well, radio Internet shows have actually kind of made the way over the hump, I think. <laughs> of course. It only took 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I Someone told me, and this is 10, 11 years ago now, I was getting, I was wanted to do it. I was in the same situation. I wanted to write a book and, and, uh, someone told me don't self publish because you're sort of damaged goods and the publishers will never want any part of you after that. I don't know if that's true or not. I really don't. I took that advice and I waited till I had an opportunity with a publisher and it's, I mean, I just about to, about to cut a deal to write my ninth and 10th book. So it's worked for me. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure how that works. I mean, I, you know, at the end of the day, if you self-publish or ebook, you probably make more dollars per book. But do you get it into all the stores? Do you get the right deals on Amazon? I just don't know. I, I, I you know, it's. I'm afraid that writing barbecue books is becoming like barbecue sauce. Uh, how many do we really need? You know, I mean, I keep writing them too, so I can't. I can't say don't write one. But uh, as far as getting it to a publisher. I, I, the only way I know is through an agent. If there's a different way, I'm not familiar with it. All right. Find an agent, start it there, and uh, they'll tell you if your book sucks or not, and you can find a new hobby to get into if it does. Uh, Ray Lampy joins us every month. Ask drbbq.com if you have a question you want us to uh, banner back and forth about next month, and you can keep up with Ray on his website, drbbq.com. Ray, as always, my pleasure, and uh, we'll talk to you again, believe it or not, in October. Can you believe it? Right as we're heading to the American Royal, right? No, the American Royal. Here we go. So uh, we'll talk to you then. Take care. There he is, Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue. And doing a fine job as always. Ray Lampy, I said. Spell check fail. I didn't spell it wrong, dick. Get that big stuff out of here. I didn't spell lame wrong, dick. I spelled Lampy there. That's the problem. Nevertheless, we push ahead. Let me talk to you about Butcher's Barbecue. Jeff Elser, Rempy, I love drinking. How do I get paid for this? I don't know. But when you find out, sign me up. Sign me up. Uh, gang, here we go. If you're like me, you want to try and find the ways that will help you increase the standard of awesome for your barbecue or grilling game. And, of course, there is no easier way to do that than by adding a little or a lot of it of Butcher Barbecue to your arsenal. That's right. We all know Butcher's Barbecue, well known for their injections, the pork, the beef, the prime injection, which has combined all the things loved from their beef injection using its award-winning flavor enhancer and its ability to keep your brisket juicy. They have combined it with what has become the competition standard in beef flavor. It's available for sale right now at ButcherBBQ.com. Also, don't forget, if you are so inclined to inject more flavor into your chicken, Bird Booster at Butcher Barbecue as well, in a veritable uh, cornucopia of flavors. If you are looking for the rub or the sauce, the sauce, no worries. You're good here, too. Butcher's Barbecue, full line of award-winning rubs. Love the steak and brisket rub. Love the honey rub on anything pork or chicken, actually. Or jalapeno poppers. Comic buffalo turds, whatever you call it. Uh, the rubs have garnered a lot of attention across the Internet. Sales are going through the roof. Uh, if you inject with Butcher's, try the premium rub. It's formulated to work hand-in-hand with the injection, a perfect one-two punch to impress the judges and friends alike. Uh, last but not least, Butcher's Barbecue Sauce, the sweet sauce. Look, when it comes to sauce, nobody's pickier than me. I've panned many a sauce on this show. People are brave enough to send me samples and say review it on the show. Mm-hmm. Dangerous. But I love Dave's. I think it was like a year or so ago I was drinking the first bottle of sweet barbecue sauce that Dave ever sent me right out of the bottle during the show. Meathead remembers that. I think Meathead was on the show, and then he was like, you're drinking that other? I was like, yeah, it's good. So believe me when I say it's good. Uh, No worries about breaking the bank on the shipping. 
Items totaling up to 55 bucks. Ship at $8.55. Sorry, 50 cents. Uh, items between 55 and 200 ship at $9.75. Anything over $200 ships for free. So as I always say, uh, buy over $200 worth and get it for free. Trust me, you can rack up $200 easy and you'll be thanking me and not paying ship. Doesn't get any better than that. Basic Patrick. I'm sorry, ButcherBBQ.com. Always trust your butcher. Basic Patrick coming up out of the break. Stick around. Get in the smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, welcome back. This portion of the Barbecue Central Show being brought to you by the Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour. Yeah. 31 cities, half a mil in cash, bragging rights to win the whole thing. The next event will be September 6th. That's this coming Saturday in South Haven, Mississippi. It is a regional final that will send top teams, top 10 teams, to the national final in Bentonville, Arkansas on September 27th. Keep up with the tour. Visit kcbs.us slash Sam's Tour. That's Sam's Club. All right. Uh, my next guest will be moving on to the Sam's Club National Finals on September 27th in the aforementioned Bentonville, Arkansas. After his team took a fifth overall this past weekend at the regional final in the Commonwealth of Richmond, Virginia. Here to recap the weekend and have a look ahead to the finals is the pitmaster of the basic barbecue team. And might I say, perhaps even more importantly than any of that crap, one of the most loyal centralites ever on the face of the earth, ladies and gentlemen, first timer to the show, pitmaster of the basic barbecue team, Patrick Paquette, joining me here on the show. Patrick, buddy, how are you? I am well, Greg. I am well. Um, lots of different places to go with you, uh, specifically, Patrick. But uh, perhaps the the first thing is first. Let's find out, you know, where the motivation or the desire or the uh, the momentous occasion that struck you that said, yeah, competition barbecue sounds like a great thing to do. <laughs> it was, um, it was an accident. I, um, I think like a lot of people, I cook a lot and I always cooked a lot and I like to cook meat. And, um, I was, I would say a griller. I wouldn't necessarily call I'm not a pure barbecue guy. And, but I had a friend who was a judge in the old, in the new England barbecue society, our home society. I had a friend who was a judge, um, and he was always telling me, you would love this stuff. You would love this stuff. And my wife and I, Wendy, went and got certified as a judge. And we judged in Cape Cod in 2011. And I knew that day that I didn't want to be a judge, that I wanted to be a, co- a competitor. And um, and sort of after that, there was a contest a couple of weeks later. I had met Steve Farron and a few other NEBS regulars. Um, I met Steve Farron through his old shop. I met Chris Hart through the barbecue brethren. Um, there was this thing about if I brought a fish where, that when we were judging and it was our first ever con- competition either that we even attended. So when we were judging and um, me and Chris hooked up, I brought a fish. We smoked his fish on the Jambo. I was like a little kid. I met some people. Next thing I knew, I got at, it was told, hey, if you really want to compete, there's a, there's, a, there's a contest that needs one more team to qualify. And like many people... We took our WSMs and we went up to this contest and we got um, we got multiple calls. We actually um, probably the worst thing that could have ever happened to me is that we broke even on the contest at our first contest. <laughs> we were on our way home and my wife said, you know, you should probably look into not renting a trailer, but buying one if we're going to be doing this. And uh, and we were bit um, from that first contest. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like it was pretty much hook, line and sinker right after that. Um, yes, we, um, we, um, oh, I'm sorry, Greg, I'm getting yelled at in the background going, my camera wasn't on and I guess it's on now. Um, there you are. Hey, look at that son of a bitch. Look at that banner in the back. Yeah, baby. This is the first time I've ever used Skype. Um, it was just for you. Oh, Um, well, thank you. I mean, it it actually looks really well. I'm going to fix the screen here real quick so we we can fly. We fly, we fly the Barbecue Central banner at every contest. Do you find that it helps or hurts most of the time? 
um, I believe it is one of my good luck charms. Yes, of course. Thank you for saying that. The check is in the mail. Um, all right, Patrick, let me ask you a uh, different question here. Uh, I love how teams come up with names and, you know, pardon the pun, basic barbecue team seems kind of basic. So did you, uh, did, was there, is there like a nickname in there or, you know, how does, how does, how does one land on the basic barbecue team? There's a, there's a two part answer, but um, in the fishing world, in the, in many different areas of my life, I am pretty much known as Basic Patrick, and it's a nickname. Um, it comes from something um, a lot of people know I don't drink. I'm, I've been in recovery for a very long time. And um, in Narcotics Anonymous, the, the, there's a book that's at the center of Narcotics Anonymous, and it's called The Basic Text. And that's sort of the inspiration for it. But there's also, when I was given that nickname by a friend of mine, we were away somewhere, and I'm into politics and I tend to be into somebody who does service, like I'll serve on a lot of boards and whatnot. And uh, and a friend of mine called me one time, said, "Yeah, that's Basic Patrick, the oxymoron." Um, <laughs> my my friend Chris Clegg from ZBQ, the team ZBQ, they're they're they've been very helpful to us um, since we started competing. Chris always says, uh, "Yeah, it's the Basic Barbecue team. There's not a chemical, an injection, a piece of technology that Patrick's not willing to use to get the job done." Um, so it's a little bit of a play on words, plus it's got a little personal meaning for me as well. Absolutely. Uh, Patrick Paquette joining me here on the show, Pitmaster of the Basic Barbecue Team. Um, let's go ahead and recap this weekend, uh, I guess, Patrick. Um, and, uh, well, maybe before we do that, you could refresh us on you know, your path into the, uh, into the regionals and what will now be the finals. Um, we, cooked in May, we cooked in Scarborough, Maine in round one, the local. Um, in the local, we took third overall in... Um, in what I would say was a field that was worthy of a final. Um, it was, um, you know, there were a lot of prestigious teams, the best of the best from New England and around the Northeast were there. Um, and we were lucky enough to get third overall there. Um, and we had a second place brisket and a third place pork, um, which was, you know, those are two monster calls in that field. And, uh, and that advanced us in. Um, into into Chesapeake. All right. So uh, as you look back on this past weekend's events, you know anything out of the normal that you didn't plan for, or something you had to contend with that you didn't, you know, have uh, something in the arsenal to shoot down and keep moving. Um, we had we had some um, prep issues during the week. Um, you know, it, it's it's unbelievably important. I trim and prep my meats at home before I go. I was taught that along the way, and. Um, I opened a brisket that had an issue, um, and, um, the brisket had slices on it from the butchering machines and, uh, and it was, and, um, so, so I was scrambling a little bit and, uh, once again, you'll hear me, I, I frequently brag about the community that is the New England Barbecue Society. Uh, one of my friends who was also competing, um, knew of the situation. We were actually talking about it on Facebook some and, uh, and offered up a brisket that he had packed away in case he had made to the jack. And, um, and this was an unbelievably beautiful brisket. And he sort of bailed me out with a couple of days to go. He hooked me up with a, with a, a brisket of the quality that I needed for this field. Uh, so, go ahead. No, and, and the only other thing I would say is that at this level, we definitely trimmed. Like normally I'll, to get my – I cook 12 pieces of chicken. To get my 12 pieces of chicken, I'm usually trimming um, 20, 25 pieces to get Oof. my 12. I actually got went through – um, I went through 40 pieces of chicken to get my 12. Ooh. I went, I bought a case of ribs and I culled the case of ribs to get the four, four racks of ribs that I did. I definitely spent my time making sure that I had the, 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 the right meat going into the, going in the door. All right. This isn't the question that I had coming up next, but I mean, the amount of food that you're ciphering through to figure out what's going to make the cut, uh, to take to this event, like what, how much are you in before you even start cooking money wise? Um, Overall, yeah, we, we landed in in Virginia. We landed at plus fourteen hundred dollars. Um, you got to remember now that I'm, um, I'm a I was a twelve hour drive or I'm a nine hour drive from here in a motorhome. So there's a lot of money there. But for meat wise alone, I'm plus four hundred and fifty dollars. And then you have entry fee and you know all that other stuff. So you're fourteen hundred dollars in before you even you even start the weekend for you. Uh, probably the biggest. The biggest, I think, that drawback to the growth or the uh, competition barbecue sort of making it more mainstream is that it is an 
Um, it's an expensive game to play, and uh, and it's uh, we track it. We're not wealthy people by any means. Um, I, you know, I think my wife and I, I think our income is a, is the you know an average blue collar income, and um, we definitely struggle. We we cook a nine this year. We may add a couple, and um, we spend a lot of money doing this, and um, it definitely makes you think sometimes. You know, when you think you did as well, it, it's. Um, uh, but uh, honestly, if you don't show up with a certain level of meat, you're really not playing on the same field. Patrick Paquette joining me here on the show, pitmaster of the basic barbecue team. Uh, as far as individual results go this past weekend, you were 11th in chicken, so just outside of the top 10. Uh, with a, were... And with a 171, which wins a contest in the, in New England anytime, and yep. that was just shows the depth of that field. I was, We turned the chicken in. I knew it was good. I felt it was good. When we saw the score, it was like, okay, I got the score that I deserved. It was just the field was that good. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think the winning chicken was just shy of 178. Yeah, yeah, yeah just short of perfect. Yeah, so, uh, you know, top scores there. But just outside the top 10, so, uh, you know, you're right there. You get a oh, 19. Well, we didn't know that, though. No, of course <laughs> you don't, but, I mean, I know it now. Uh, <laughs> you, you don't get a call in ribs. So let me ask you, uh, you know, fairly seasoned competitor, not doing 50 a year like some of these folks, but, I mean, you've, you know how the calls go. So when you don't hear your name for the first two categories, uh, do you still remain optimistic or do you think that you just shit the bed right off the bat or, you know, where are you at after two calls in? Um, I was confident that the chicken wasn't going to kill me um, because I like the chicken going in. I, I had no – I have zero confidence in my ribs. I'm struggling with ribs. They're our worst category by far. Um so I didn't expect the rib call. Um, so going, in, although I was nervous and I was a little bit bummed at not having a chicken call, I was really looking for the for the next two. There was, like I said, ribs. I sort of put aside, and I worry about ribs hurting me in the contest. The other three, I have confidence. So I was still, I still had some hope going into the pork. And you get a second, my, which is our best category. You get a second overall pork. So uh, I have to imagine you're fairly elated with almost taking that whole category. Um. Yes, I was very happy. Pork's our best category. I expect a good. It was a good pork box. Um, you sort of get a. I've learned at least with pork, I got an idea when I when it's when it's when it should get a top five call. I can see like what I want to turn in, and um, and I had, you know, we got that. Um, I I didn't at this point in time. I was worried about being in the top ten with just the one call, um, especially with not with not confidence in ribs. But the pork call kept me floating a little bit. All right, so you don't, I mean, basically you get one call out of the four. Brisket uh, was just hanging around the top ten. It's 13th, so again, you don't hear your name. Um, as the overalls are, are being called out, um, are, are you worried that because you only heard your name once that you, you might not hit the top ten, um, or are you, you fairly confident that you were sniffing around top ten and you're just outside? Based on Based on the fact that Three Eyes Barbecue had three calls, um, chick swine and bovine had three calls. Um, I didn't think we had any, well, I didn't think we were, had a shot at the top 10 as it started. Um, very quickly though, um, stubborn bull barbecue out of New Jersey. Another one of the great guys, we sort of a half, he's sort of a half a Nebs guy. We, he, <laughs> we, um, you know, the Nebs crew is really tight. We have a, we have a really great community and, uh, we support each other. We talk to each other, you know, at, at contest and, Tim's basically might as well be from New England if we could get that jet screen paint off his thing. <laughs> we were, um, I didn't have confidence, but he got a call and he had, he had two lower top 10 calls, but the, what was it? The next two calls were, um, chick swine and bovine and three eyes got low top 10 calls. At that point, experience of competitions knew that with one call, you could have a good average. And beside the ribs, I was confident in average score. So I went from at the beginning of it thinking no shot to then going, well, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen right here in the middle, right after those two big teams had been called, who we were all, in my head, I was looking at them at grand and reserve, those two teams. So at that point in time, if we, you know, I thought it might happen, and, and, and the call came. It was um, We were thrilled. Obviously, you go into – an event looking to win. Uh, I would imagine most pitmasters are doing that unless they just have a lot of money to blow for no good reason. Um, but as you mentioned, uh, you know, hearing the results and, and getting that second place pork call, I mean, at some point did you transition out of winning and just hoping to, to, to make sure you got that top 10 to advance? Advancing became more the, the pressing issue of the day? 
Yeah. When, when there was no chicken call winning was in my mind out the door, um, with no chicken in rib call at that point in time and other teams having two calls, um, I had no, um, expectation of a win by any means. Um, I was looking to be in the top 10, um, you know, I mean, you're always looking for some miracle, but it, it, realistically, I was praying on the top ten. When when the port call came, it gave me a little bit of hope. I was pretty, I was pretty down after no chicken call and no rib call, but to be expected. Um, Twenty five days away from the finals, top fifty teams from the series will have been locked and loaded at that point, and uh, there's still two regional finals yet to hit. But given what you know as of you know Tuesday, September second. Uh, where do you rate the basic barbecue team in chances of winning the whole damn thing? Um, uh, how do how I? I'm looking for the scale. You want me rating it, but I'm 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 going there to take first place, Greg. Yeah, hundred percent chance of winning. That's right. You didn't I, say it. I'll say it for you. you I didn't, didn't say it. You want it by percentage? Yes. 77. All right, I'll take that. That's an odd number, literally, I mean, I, figuratively. I'd be lying if I didn't say we were honored to make Chesapeake because of the of the quality of teams, and I knew a lot of them, that were in Scarborough, Maine. Yeah. To get through this field um, it was, um, was amazing. The place where we placed, ahead of who we placed, behind who we placed, was amazing. The fact that we're going to stand in that parking lot and compete with the people that are there, 730-something teams out of the 750 spots, I think, entered, and that we're down to the top 50. Like, it's a win there. My goal is to come home even to get it to get enough cost to get my gas money back. Um, <laughs> it's 1,555 miles from my home is oh. that parking lot in, in Arkansas. Each way? Each way. Holy jeez, oh, Pete. Uh, we're really psyched. I'll say this. We're going to get to meet Diane Mee uh, from the chat room. Yeah, and, that's right. She's qualified. Um, she's been on the show before. That, and so, um, like, that's what I'm looking forward to. David Qualls has been um, a friend who I met through this chat room and through the Cook Shack, um, the Cook Shack forums, because I cook on a Fast Eddie on an FEC, and he used to. And, um, like, going to see David, I'm hoping to, you know, I'm hoping to see David. He's cook. He's still got to go through his rounds, but. Um, that's what I, I'm like looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to putting my food up against the best in the country and uh, seeing how she fares. I, I want to represent New England um, well. You know, that's we're going there for the experience. Uh, we're not. We, um, our intention is to go there and win. My goal is to put the four category boxes to put my meat, what I want out of my meat, to put that in the box and to turn it in, and then let the judges decide. Like. I know what I want my pork box to be. I know what I want my chicken box to be. If I do as good as I believe I can, then I'll be happy. And then the rest is sort of ice cream. Patrick Paquette is the pit master of the basic barbecue team heading to the Sam's Club National Finals on September 27th to take his hand against the 49 other top teams that will be there vying for the overall championship, of course, uh, I couldn't wish you more good luck than I possibly could as a human being, uh, Patrick, but uh, I will do my level best and send you, uh, I guess, fuck tons of karma to make sure that uh, we put you over the top. But appreciate uh, the recap on the event this past weekend and continued success, man. Let's bring it home for the show. Thank you very much, Greg. Yep. Thank you. You got it. There he is. Patrick Paquette from the Basic Barbecue Team. And dare I say, uh, you know, especially for them, cooking very well. Um, you don't have to win to be on the show. Finish in fifth place or ninth place or third place. I'm going to support the people that support me. I'm going to have you on the show. We're going to talk about it. Fifth place is nothing to sneeze at. Third place, nothing to sneeze at over those fields that he has gone through now to move on to the final. Congratulations to Patrick and Wendy. From the basic barbecue team, good luck at the end of the month. Uh, Public service announcement, folks. Barbecue brothers and sisters from one of your show sponsors, Stephen DeFranco of Stephen DeFranco Jewelers. Also an admitted barbecue junkie. Many holidays are coming throughout the year. What to get mom? What to get dad? New clothes? Nah, new shoes. Forget it. 
barbecue sauce gets all over that stuff. No ties for dad, no crappy skirts for mom. How about a fine handcrafted watch? Steve has an incredible selection of watches, perfect for dear old dad or dear old mom. Bowl of a watch. Why spend a ton of money on a watch if you don't have to? Bowl of a watches are stylish, affordable, starting under two hundred dollars. Bowl of a watches come in traditional quartz styles and retro styled automatic versions. They also have chronographs and skeletons. They fill out the bowl of a line of timepieces. You have the precisionist model or line. Want a most accurate watch in the world? Who doesn't? Bowl of a precisionist is just that watch. The exclusive movement of the bowl of a precisionist breaks down secondhand movements into sixteen segments per second. Given the secondhand a smooth moving appearance, steel and titanium versions are available as well, and they can be customized with color on top of that with our in house painter. Then you have the Accutron, high end without the high price, Cadillac of the Bull of a Line. The Accutron is the pinnacle of high end design without breaking the bank. Starting below 600 bucks, the Accutron watch gives you the high end style, quality, and lifestyle without breaking the bank. Citizen, gadget junkie, Citizen's is perfect for the gadget guy or gal. EcoDrive technology converts light into energy, powering your watch perfectly and accurately. Need a timer for your barbecue cooking? Some citizens have multiple timers along with alarms and multiple time zones. And don't forget about that cottage watchmaker out there on the west side of Cleveland, Philip and Company. Starting at just about 900 bucks, Philip watches not only have an elegant European style, but they're affordable. On all his watches are serial numbered and registered with Philip himself. So check out Stephen's website, stephendefranco.com. That's stephendefranco.com. Then call him once you find what you like, 440-943-2700. He'll give you the barbecue brother or sister hookup, the real discounted price, because he's not allowed to show it on the website. stephendefranco.com, 440-943-2700. That's Stephen DeFranco, official jeweler to the barbecue stops. All right, we're back to... uh, wrap up the first hour big name interviews right advice on cooking brisket and ribs and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue it's the barbecue central show all right i am uh, rapidly behind and uh, we need to get going here so uh, i will bid you a quick segment fondue we're back to reload with the second hour right after this thanks again to patrick paquette from the basic barbecue team. Uh, We'll be back in seconds. Stick around. We'll be right back. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention? Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Fine. How's it going? You have a great show. I'm a big fan. So what? What? What's the? You know, this man looks like he's dead, and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? He ate fifty four wiener. Oh, listen, Laverne, you shake his face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seeds. <laughs> we have top men working right now. Ooh. Top men. And just like that, we are into the second hour. That's right. You have found, stumbled upon, and or happened at the Barbecue Central Show. Now, this show talks about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling. We broadcast li- we I broadcast live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. It's the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I am your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you for the second hour. If you missed the first hour, never fear. You can get this show multiple ways on replay. It'll be up before midnight tonight. How about that? You visit my website, thebbqcentralshow.com. You call me, 216-220-0966. You email the show, greg at thebbqcentralshow.com. All those ways. It's fun. We have a good time here every day. Tuesday. You should stop by more often. Catch the show live if you possibly could. Hey, still to come on the show tonight, Dave Benjamin about hot box grills, and we'll be talking with Scott Roberts from ScottRobertsWeb.com, the official Barbecue Central Sauce and Rub Reviewer. Coming up on the show next week, second Tuesday of every month, Meathead! Uh, This coming Tuesday, Meathead and I will be discussing 
at some length, I'm not sure exactly if it's an in-depth thing or if it's going to be like high level, whatnot, but um, pizza on the grill. We're going to have a meathead pizza segment. A lot of people have been asking for me and meathead to talk about pizza on the grill. It's one of my favorite things on the grill, especially if you do have those uh, uh, ceramic style cookers that uh, Ray and I were talking about. It does uh, afford you the opportunity to find that uh, heat that is needed for the uh, thin style pizzas. You know, I've tried the thick crust pizzas on the on the the cooker and you now the high temperatures and all that. Eh, it don't work too good. Get that big stuff out of here. The middle uh, keeps the middle stay a little doughy. I don't like that. I want a nice crisp crust. Crisp. Folks, the 2014 Sam's Club series, as I had mentioned in the last segment, rolled into the Commonwealth of Richmond, Virginia this past weekend. Uh, Again, a regional final, seeing the top 10 teams move on to the national finals in Bentonville, Arkansas, on September 27th, so like 25 days from now. The top 10 teams moving on to the finals in Bentonville, Arkansas, taking grand champion checkered flag 500 barbecue. At a 673. Coming up. In reserve grand championship fashion. Longest running sponsor of this show. No surprise to this barbecue competition watcher. Bob Trudnack and the folks over at the Barbecue Guru. Boom. Big Block Barbecue taking third place. Redneck, Redneck Scientific taking fourth. Who was that fifth place guy? Oh, yeah. Patrick Paquette and the Basic Barbecue Team moving on at a 669 clip. Chick Swine and Bovine taking six. Insane Swine Barbecue seventh. Three Eyes Barbecue taking eighth place. Ninth place Stubborn Bull Barbecue and rounding out the top ten moving on to Bentonville. Smoking Dudes Barbecue. Congratulations. I really appreciate Patrick taking the time to come on the show this past segment and talking about how they got into it. And Look, I don't know how many times I've had a pit master on this show and say, well, how do you, how do you get on the competition barbecue scene? Well, it was just by chance, and then we won, and then we were hooked. Yeah. There were some other questions I wanted to ask Patrick. Just ran out of time. That's what happens when you're an incredibly good interviewer like me and you don't set aside uh, time preferences and decide to go off on your own. I saw this on livefreelivenatural.com. Livefreelivenatural.com. 25 things fast food restaurants don't want you to know. In the uh, pre-scriptural says, uh, we all know that fast food is incredibly unhealthy, but what are some secrets from inside the industry that these chains don't want you to know? From interesting to disgusting, potentially deadly? Check out these 25 things that fast food corporations don't want you privy to. Number 25. Those grill marks on your burgers aren't real. They're put there by the factory. Uh What? Are you telling me that those grill marks on my Burger King burger didn't come from the grill? Outrageous. 24. If you want to make sure your french fries are fresh, order them without salt. It will force them to cook a new batch. Then you can add your own salt. Oh, good tip right there. I'll take it. 23rd fact. Fast food chili is just made out of meat from old burgers. Really? Never knew that. Number 22. Those salads you're ordering have nearly just as many calories as one Big Mac. Oh, no. 21. One way to measure the cleanliness of a fast food restaurant is to look up in the ice shoot of the drink dispenser. You'll be surprised how often you can find mold up there. Oh, no! Yeah. 20, actually nearly 50% of restaurant fountain drink dispensers have fecal bacteria. (laughs) 
<laughs> Number 19, the pictures of fast food you see in advertisements are airbrushed and touch up with fiberglass. It takes two hours just to set up one hamburger. Well, you know what? That's not necessarily incorrect because I worked briefly for a food photographer. But I'll tell you this. Uh, they have to use the food they put in the picture. Absolutely. That is true. They do airbrush that shit. But the food that's in there, they have to use the ingredients. That's not fake food. You know, that's not uh, shaving cream for whipped topping. No, no, no. That's against the law. Number 18, in restaurant kitchens, more people follow the 10-second rule than you'd like to think. Number 17, fast food restaurants throw away an incredible amount of food every night. Number 17, I'm sorry, number 16, at some places like Taco Bell, the food carries over. So guess that they serve you in the morning. So guess what they serve you in the morning? What, the stuff from yesterday. Uh, Number 15, even some restaurants from the same chain can have vastly different standards and quality and usually depends upon the management. Number 14, fast food workers are supposed to wear gloves when they prepare food, but most of them don't follow that rule Number 13, if you look around the parking lot, dining area, or bathroom, and you see a lot of trash, what do you think the less visible places like the kitchen look like? Ooh. All right, let's go right to the top 10. Fast food milkshakes can easily contain over 50 kinds of chemicals. Uh Number nine, fast food is filled with high fructose corn syrup because it's cheaper sweetener. It also tricks your body into wanting more of it. What? It's a trick? (laughs) In many places, just before close, all the coffee is decaf, whether you order it with caffeine or not. This is because nobody wants to clean two different coffee pots. Lazy. Number seven, be careful with lemons you drink. Everybody touches them, nobody washes them, and you just get cut up and laid out. Number six, cashiers are not allowed to tell you how many calories are in a particular dish, even if they know. They're supposed to say all that information is available online. Number five, those scrambled eggs are made out of powder. Number four, quite often fast food salads are made several days earlier and just sit in a tray in the refrigerator until someone orders them. Number four, the often... uh, Wait, number three, one hamburger can easily contain meat from up to 100 different cows. What? Number two, fast food restaurants are one of the biggest exploiters of cheap domestic labor. They are usually actively engaged in anti-union activities. And the number one thing that fast food restaurants don't want you to know about. Fast food restaurants load their kids' meals with extra sugar to make them more appealing to kids. Even the pizza crust is not exempt. No! What? Are you telling me that fast food restaurants are somehow lacing their food, making kids want it more and more? I don't believe it. No, 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 I can't hear you, I can't see you, I can't hear you. I gotta tell you, not some of the most surprising revelations that I've heard. Again, that's a live, live healthy, live natural or whatever. Hold on a sec. I'm reading a text message from one of my loyal listeners that drove by the Sam's event in Richmond, saw Basic Patrick taking fifth place overall. Right. Right, folks. Let's talk about it. El Diablo Mustard. That's right. Whether you are tailgating for a college or a pro team, September is kickoff season for the diehard football fans and El Diablo Mustard wants to turn Yo Tailgate into a blazing affair. Try adding some El Diablo's fiery habanero, roasted chipotle, flaming jalapeno or spicy mango into your favorite tailgate recipe and you'll add a new layer of flavor that kicks that hot and intense thing into high gear. El Diablo features six bold flavors that taste great and are hot as hell. Try mango for Sweet Island Heat. Add a kick of Southwest with roasted roasted chipotle. Try Steakhouse for a zing of Worcestershire and tangy tomato. 
Make an ordinary dog an instant chili dog with El Diablo's Texas Chili. And try jalapeno on some hot bacon or a burger for real jalapeno puree and mustard zinc. Or try habanero for a flavor inferno you daring types demand for all heat all day. Connect with El Diablo on the Facebook and on the Twitters for recipes for the tailgate, for tips, for giveaways, bold flavors, graced, great taste, and hot as hell. El Diablo is the mustard that bites back. You can find out about them at eldiablomustard.com. That's eldiablomustard.com. Tailgating. It's tailgate season, boys and girls. That's right. Bring it on. Bring it down. Bring it down. Eldiablomustard.com. Oh, well, if I didn't... Here's a brief message here, folks. Self-promoter... Clinton Cantwell from Smoke in My Eye. Dot word. FYI, I'll be competing on Travel Channel's American Grilled at 9 a.m., 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central Wednesday night if you all want to catch it. And I promise no watery mac and cheese. What does that mean? I don't know. But we're back with Dave Benjamin from Hotbox Grills right after this, I can tell you that. Stick around. We'll be right back. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right. Welcome back. Bit delayed. Apologize. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Uh, this portion of the Barbecue Central Show being brought to you by CookinPellets.com. Your number one source for quality wood pellets for all of your pellet-driven cookers. Visit cookandpellets.com for more information or to purchase. You can also visit amazon.com and buy cooking pellets right from Amazon. Who's ever heard of Amazon? You can get cooking pellets there. Cookandpellets.com. Proud sponsor of this show. Happy to have them, by the way. All right, uh, Centralites, you are on the hunt for a truly portable cooking unit. Don't lie. Tailgating is coming up. You like to camp. You're a backyard fun guy or gal, and you want to have something truly portable, something unique. You're going to want to listen to this next segment as the person joining me now has a product that just might fit the bill. Let's go ahead and welcome in first-timer to the show, creator of the Hot Box Grill, Dave Benjamin, joining me here on the show. Dave, how are you? Dave. Yes. Hey, how are you? I, I'm doing great, Greg. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing absolutely fabulous, Dave. Appreciate you making time for the show tonight. Um, I guess right off the top, for the folks that are listening in the uh, instant chat uh, or online and have access to uh, the computer, hotboxgrills.com is the website if you want to check it out and kind of see what we're going to be talking about. You know, for the folks on the video side, we're going to be flashing some pictures here as well. But, Dave, as we get started with you, uh, maybe a little uh, background about yourself uh, professionally maybe, and then uh, we'll start mixing in a little bit of the hotbox. Sure, yes. Uh, yeah, basically, I'm going to self-employed uh, master carpenter contractor up here in northern Illinois for pretty much most of my life. So uh, being self-employed uh, has really been, uh, for me, uh, something that uh, I've enjoyed. Uh, I'm a designer, I'm a carpenter, so I like to build things, design things, to work with my hands. And uh, family man, I have three uh, beautiful kids, uh, I have three stepkids. we got a pretty big family up here, so... You know, I had to learn how to cook and get them all fed. So it's <laughs> it's been a it's been a uh, a long uh, a long nice uh, 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 employment for me, and I and I still enjoy what I do. And uh, so that basically is my background. I've I'm a, I've been in Northern Illinois my whole life. It's a little place called Roscoe, Illinois, which is just north of Rockford, right on the Wisconsin border. So we get plenty of cold weather up here, but uh, we grill year round. 
Uh, Dave, you know, master carpenter, to me, the layman signifies things like, you know, wood and being able to craft stuff like cabinets and so forth, uh, which I would love to be able to do, but I'm the worst handyman ever on the face of the earth. So where does the, uh, where does the hot box grill concept uh, start to, to fester in your brain, and, and how do you kind of grab hold of it and start to make a run with it? Yeah, this is more of something that uh, actually happened by chance, not by choice. Uh, we did uh, tailgating in uh, at Purdue uh, Boilermakers in Indiana, where my where my wife's family is from, and we would go. Uh, this is back in oh seven, oh eight, and oh nine. And uh, every time we went, we would have a hard time finding a, a good quality, sturdy, portable grill that was large enough to handle a group. And one evening, I just decided to start tinkering with some drawings because I that's what I enjoy to do is, is design and started to bring uh, bring around this design for the hot box portable grill. And that was at the end of 09. And then in 10, the first part of 010 is when we decided to go ahead and make a prototype. And so we wanted, I wanted to look at it in three dimensions. And then once I had the prototype done in, in the first part of 010, it just kind of, it just kind of moved forward from there. Uh, so I guess for the people that haven't seen it or, or heard about it or aren't able to, to watch the video that I'm playing right now, uh, you know, paint a, a mental picture for us as far as what the, the hot box is all about. And uh, I guess why you think it uh, kind of is unique to the market segment that it hits. Well, the one uh, the one key element, or more than one key element, but the, a main key element that was important to me was the ability to adjust charcoal levels uh, in a portable grill. And basically, the by the firebox itself is 24 inches by 18 inches, and it is uh, it's got two levels of charcoal. What we've done is I've, I've I've gone ahead and we've broken down our charcoal trays into three individual trays. So what you can have is you can have charcoal level on two different on two different levels, uh, high for searing, low for slow roasting. And uh, so the firebox is unique uh, in that you can actually adjust your charcoal heights to whatever you're cooking or roasting or smoking. Um, our our hood is uh, more I call it a hip roof. It, it, that's sort of a a home does uh, kind of a home builder's uh, description of this of the look of the hood. Uh, it kind of looks like a hip roof on a house, and it it lends itself to the dome uh, kind of a dome design where once you get once you have the uh, the firebox uh, fired up and and you put the hood on, it gives you that uh, rotation of heat inside when what is what you need to roast. We've got two. Uh, firebox vents, one on either end, and then we have two vents in the hood. So it gives you a lot of good circulation and a lot of ability to control the heat. Dave, was there a, we're talking with Dave Benjamin, by the way, creator of uh, the Hotbox Grill. You can find it at hotboxgrills.com. Uh, obviously, there's other, um, I guess what you could turn mobile uh, cooking units. Uh, you know, the Smoky Joe comes to mind and so forth. But, you know, this one is uh, obviously a little bit different. Did you think that there was... You know something missing from the segment in regards to true portability or, or being able to to break something down and when it's put back together uh, still have it be sturdy and, and have a decent amount of cooking space to uh, to get food done uh yes because we had a i mean i've looked at i look at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different portable grills and our our biggest uh problem was to try to find something like i said large enough to, to cook for a lot of people, but yet you could fold it up in a, in a way that you could easily slip it into a trunk um, or into a van, uh, in a, into an RV. The four sides of the, of the firebox itself, all four sides are hinged, they're piano hinged, and all the hinges are stainless steel, we powder coat everything. So the, the two of the sides fold in and two of the sides fold under, and basically when the, when the firebox is folded in that fashion, it actually fits inside the hood. So you end up with a nice compact 24 by 18 by about 7-inch tall uh, package that can hold upwards of an 18-pound turkey. You can do 20 pounds of pork butt, a couple beer can chickens. We've had 30 hamburgers on this thing. So 
it's it, it's the, the portability of it really is, I think, a key uh, to 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 making the grill, you know, something that everybody can use because it also smokes as as well as grills, and uh, it holds the heat. We make it uh, with some fairly heavy duty steel, uh, so it does hold the heat. You can walk away for six hours, and it will still maintain about a 240-degree temperature. Um, in regards to the development of the project, uh, where, how long does it take to go from you know concept, getting that first uh, beta test, and coming up with something that you least feel uh, relatively confident that you want to, to bring to the market? How much time passes between those two points? Yeah, it's it's a long drawn out process. Like I said, I've, I'm uh, my day job is still being a contractor up north, um, and once we had our design prototype and finished in 2010, we basically took the year 2010 and just sort of cranked out a couple of units and then tested them all the way through 2010, kind of tweaking things here and there, and you know making a few changes. And then it wasn't until 2011 that we decided to go ahead and we were making some bench, we call them made bench units, which is more or less a custom made, you know, unit that is made in the shop on a bench, you know, by the guys that, that we have, that we have not employed, but that we hired to, to, to put these together. Um, so it was really just a matter of, of um, taking some time to make sure of what we had was working the way we wanted it to work. And 2010 proved that it is doing some things that we were really not expecting. Uh, once you shut the unit down, it, it actually kills the coals. So you will, the next day, have coals left for your next fire up. Uh, so it started to do some things that uh, really surprised us. And uh, so we kind of worked with uh, just some small sales and testing out some customers and getting some good feedback. And then it was um, 2013 that we went ahead and made our shop forms. And uh, basically what a shop form is, is a, is a form that's pretty well detailed out so that now every unit that we make is exactly the same. And uh, that's that was kind of our goal was to make sure that our the hot box grills, when they come off the line, more or less, they're all built exactly the same, and that was our quality control. Uh, it, does, it does take a couple of years, a couple, two, three years, to go through the process of testing and making changes. Dave Benjamin from Hot Box Grills joining us here on the show. Hotboxgrills.com is the website. Uh, Dave, is this something that's made uh, here in the United States? Yeah, it's... Uh, that's another thing we're very proud of. It's it's made here in the states. It's made right here in southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. Um, it is uh, all pretty much ninety five percent American made steel, American made products that we use. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have high temperature handles on the on the grill's hood. We have high temperature plastic handles that actually attach the four corners together. Our three inch Tailgating legs are all stainless steel. As I said, our, all our hinges are also stainless steel. And, uh, you know, that's something that we we wanted to build in quality. We wanted it, we wanted it tough. We wanted the grill to be very versatile. And uh, I think we're, we've, we're at a point now where we're very happy with the design. We just recently made a, a, a nice design change on the hot box grill. In the past, our first unit that came out in order to adjust our charcoal trays, you had to actually drop a side in order to make those adjustments. Now the new design, once the firebox is assembled and, are, and the ash pan is in place, you can adjust your, your charcoal trays with, a, with, the, with the firebox completely closed. It makes it very easy to use and very versatile as far as going right from a hot grill or you're searing a steak to adjusting your charcoal trays to go ahead and like slow roast chickens or, or do some beer can chicken. So we're really happy with the new design change. In regards to, uh, well, let me ask this question. I mean, I asked you if they were American made, was there any, was there ever any consideration about, you know, outsourcing to, uh, not cheapen it, but obviously if you can go somewhere else, uh, the cost of doing business in other places is a little less expensive uh, than doing it here in the States. I mean, was it, 
of, of superior importance to make sure that it was built here in the States? Or did you ever consider, uh, you know, farming it out somewhere else to lessen the cost, I guess? Yeah, no, I, I know, I know to raise margins, that's one thing to do, but our, our, our main, our main goal, our main thought in mind is, is we want to keep, we want to keep our product in the state. We want to keep the guys and the girls that are working in our community. We want to keep them working. And at this juncture, I really don't even have a thought of outsourcing anywhere, but uh, we want to keep it right here in, in Northern Illinois. In fact, uh, I think when uh, CB was on the show last week, he had mentioned uh, a product that we all love is, is Grill Grates. And Grill Grates is actually made right here in our community. Really? So we've got, yeah, yeah, they're made right up here in, uh, in Beloit, uh, Illinois, Beloit, Wisconsin. Well, Beloit, Illinois, and then Roscoe, Illinois. And they're made right up here. In fact, the factory that, that makes the Grill Grates is on the same road that I live on. And the, the company that I deal with that actually assembles and manufactures the hot box grills are like, is like a mile and a half away from where we're at. So, uh, you know, we're, we're keeping, uh, we're keeping the community people working and that's what we're planning on doing. We're going to keep it USA made. Uh, how much does it weigh put together uh, minus the charcoal, but how much does it weigh carrying around? Uh, you're well, if you, if you actually loaded everything that, that includes, uh, the other change we made, which we, we switched to a half inch, expanded metal uh, food grade system, which is similar to what you find in, in some of the competition smokers. So that added some weight to, to it, but it also made it another, you know, just sort of another step towards a heavy-duty grill and, and smoker, but it weighs about 55 pounds with everything. All right, so a solid unit to be sure, 55 pounds. <clears throat> um, right. As far as uh, uh, price, uh, what are we looking at for uh, one of these to buy? On our website, we list them at three fifty nine out the door, free delivery, and uh, we just switched to free delivery uh, prior to Labor Day, and we're going to keep it that way. Uh, I think you know at least uh, right on through the tailgate season and into probably the uh, the winter. So three fifty nine free delivery to the lower forty eight states, states barring of course Hawaii and, and Alaska. Uh, we'll ship there, not a problem. It's just that we would need you know shipping information so we. Fix that out, but that's our that's our website price right now. Uh, was is there any or was there any battling of the mind? Um, you know, you hear portable grill, you see it. It's not you know huge, um, but obviously it's a solid piece. And then you see a price tag of three hundred fifty nine bucks, and you know immediately it, it, Americans love to have things that are American made. They're inherently cheap bastards at the same time. Um, <laughs> Have you had to battle any of the, you know, quote unquote, sticker shock uh, to to build that value in the unit? Well, I haven't had any anyone to date uh, actually come to me and, and say, "Wow, this is really, really high." Because what I what I've done is we've 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 done a lot of comparison with a lot of the quote portable grills on the market today, and if you have a product that's unique and as versatile as the hot box grill, uh, you know, I could not find, uh, we couldn't find anything out there that, that we could really apples to apples. Um, if you look around at some of the higher quality so-called portable grills, they're going to be, you know, in that ballpark. Um, and as far as size goes, I don't think there's a, there's a portable grill on the market out there that can actually touch the size uh, of the cooking chamber that we have. We have about, well, we have 360 plus square inches of grilling surface. Uh, and as far as how much cavity space there is to roast things, like I said, I've done an 18 pound turkey in this. So we've got, there's a lot of room in this grill and it's uh, hard. You'd be hard pressed today to I think to find a, a portable grill that has the size uh, made in the USA and as versatile and sturdy as the hot box grill. Dave Benjamin from Hotbox Grills joining me here on the show for a few more minutes. Uh, Dave, in regards to uh, purchasing, uh, is it only through the website? Or can you uh, have you worked any type of pull-throughs on a dealer situation, or how you go about getting one? Well, right now it's pretty much a website. Um, I, if, if there are individuals in the area that can actually do a pickup, and we can pick up at our manufacturer, uh, we'll even discount it further. Um, if, if, if they can do a pickup, but right now everything is pretty much done through the uh, 
through the uh, the website. We're in the process of kind of building up, uh, you know, some distributors and building up some sales reps. So we're in that stage right now of development where 2014 moving forward is is, is kind of a and we're in a growing state. Have you uh, been uh, have you been told or have other um, entrepreneurs uh, mentioned the fact that you should look to to get on something like an Amazon or uh, get into a big box store? Uh, well, you know, the Amazon, yeah. I mean, these are things that we're going to, as we move forward, we'll, we'll probably be, be getting into. I don't really anticipate us getting too involved with any of the big box stores. Um, we're going to try to pretty much stay website. We're going to stay with, with dealers or looking for co-sellers, uh, looking for some sales reps. And, I, and I, like I said, I seriously doubt a big box store is going to be in the future for hot box growth. It's just, you know, an area that, I've, sp- I've spoken to a lot of people in the barbecue business throughout the entire nation, a great group of people. I mean, they're just fabulous as far as helping. Yep. And I've gotten a lot of feedback from them. And, and the feedback is, is if you get into a big box store, you're sometimes looking for trouble. So uh, we're going to stay, we're going to stay a website and dealers for now. Dave Benjamin is the creator of hot box grills. You can find that at hot box grills. Dot com. Dave, really appreciate the time tonight and uh, getting us to know a little bit about the hot box. Uh, continued success. Man, let's uh, follow progress and see how you do. I sure will, Greg. All right, Dave, thanks so much. Dave Benjamin. Hot box grills. Hotboxgrills.com. And uh, so here's a guy who has literally been at it since uh, 2010 to some degree. It's now... You know, 2014, as we say, rapidly coming to a close. And uh, 2015 could be the the growth, seismic growth of Hotbox Grills. If you didn't see the video that I was showing there on the uh, video side of things because you were on the audio stream only or listening through iTunes Radio or LA Talk Radio or whatever, uh, go to hotboxgrills.com. You can see the whole video on how to actually use it. Dave does a very good job of educating you on how the cooker works, how to put it together, features, benefits, all that good stuff. I would like to have one in the arsenal. I'm not going to lie. I have all the cookers. I don't have anything that size, that portable. I could take down the Muni lot and throw down with the Cleveland Browns. Folks, do you need an easy and consistent cooker for barbecue? Check out Cook Shack's line of cookers. They have the electric models. They have the Fast Eddie line of cookers. Uh, if you're l- pretty much one to fit any kind of budget or any size that you're going to need, maybe it's just you and a, and a significant other. You know, you're not going to be cooking for hundreds and hundreds of people. You get the smaller electric ones. They're very economical to run. You can use the chunks of wood. They got that heating element. If you want a little extra smoke, you can use the the smoke logs, all that good stuff. You can uh, check them out at cookshack.com, 800-423-0698. That's 800-423-0698. For instance, uh, there's this AmeriQ. You use real wood chunks to smoke your foods. It's inexpensive to operate. It's efficient due to the spin glass insulation and heavy-duty stainless steel construction. It features a digitally controlled thermostat. And it has a meat probe. It holds up to 50 pounds of meat and vegetables. All Cook Shack products, of course, come with a no-risk 30-day money-back guarantee. You know what that means. You can use it for 30 days as much as you want. You can cook on it eight times a day for 30 days. I'm no mathematician. That's roughly 75,000 different cooks in 30 days, give or take. And then you don't like it? Send it back. Give your money back. Don't delay. Go to the website now, cookshack.com. Call one of their friendly sales support team members, 800-423-0698. Tell them you heard about uh, their products right here on this show, Barbecue Central Show. Maybe they'll hook you up with an extra discount of something or throw in a spice rub or let you talk to Stuart Powell uh, for five minutes for free. Maybe not. He's very busy. Maybe Fast Eddie, though. Again, that's cookshack.com, 800-423-0698, located in the Ponca City, Oklahoma. All right, uh, Scott Roberts coming out of the bullpen next to review sauces and rubs. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show right here on the Barbecue Central Networks.
Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs. And the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Who would have thought this music thing was going to go this far? I never asked for this. I never asked for this fast living. The women, the whiskey. All right, welcome back. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Uh, Blake, no, not, it was Matthew Boer. Boer? Hey, when I hear hot box, I think of two significantly different things. Perf. Way to go, perf. Way to class up the show. Hot box. <laughs> I get it. Way to go. Uh, where to go? Damn it. All right, here to help me close the show in proper fashion, a monthly guest, the official sauce and rub reviewer of the barbecue central show fiery food expert blogger writer voiceover writer scott roberts joining me here on the show scott how are you fantastic how you doing greg doing absolutely fabulous scott appreciate you asking and making time for the show as always of course uh, scott is the official sauce and rub reviewer here for the show and i was just trying to think uh, earlier today how long have we been doing the official sauce and rub reviewing for the show now is it like two years or three years or Four years, actually. In For 2010. real? Four years? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, hard to believe. Long, long time ago we started this. This is, uh, I, th- I guess it's true when they say the time flies when you're having fun. Uh, of course. I don't know who they are, but boy, they're smart. It's no exception. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so uh, we're going to get to the three items that you have here for uh, for review in a second, but I uh, wanted to get your take on uh, the other thing that you're an expert in which is the world of fiery foods uh, is any like late breaking news or events that are coming up that you might be at for people to you know meet and get autographs or what's happening in that world uh this we are in the heart the thick of fiery foods festival season right now um there's a show called the houston hot sauce festival here towards the end of september uh i really want to go i cannot guarantee 100 percent that i will be there but if you guys uh happen to be be there the texas i guess uh would be the west louisiana area that is a terrific outdoor festival to attend uh i mean of course not just a hot sauce they had the salsa barbecue all kinds of different great products great vendors are going to be there uh whether or not i'm there everyone should attend Uh, Other than that, uh, I'm pretty light as far as the festivals. I'm probably going to keep it local around here in the St. Louis area this fall. Like, what's happening at a festival? Like, if I go to this one in Texas, I get on the private plane and shoot on down. Like, what can I expect to to see there? Is it just people eating hot peppers and trying to outdo each other, blowing flames out of their butt? Or is it, like, people selling wares? Or is it, like, an expo type of a show for fiery food stuff? How does it go down? Sometimes they do. Sometimes there will be eating contests, uh, different events, live music at these types of uh, festivals. Uh, at its bare bones, it, it, you will have you know a couple dozen booths of people selling all kinds of different products. So you can just walk around and taste. But some of the uh, flavor combinations of, and different concoctions people can make are just amazing, mind-blowing. Yeah, you get your standard run-of-the-mill red Louisiana-style pepper sauces. You can buy those in a store. But I look for at these types of festivals are people trying something new, something different. And one of those such products I'm going to be reviewing tonight. All right. Well, good segue. Let's get right into it. Uh, the first thing we're going to be talking about tonight is Nate Paul's Sweet barbecue sauce. Okay, uh, now this one and the pulse here is as billed as a sweet barbecue sauce. To me, I, I enjoy different types of regionalities when it comes to barbecue sauce, different flavor profiles. I do like a nice sweet edge, but usually when it comes from brown sugar, something like molasses, when you get a barbecue sauce that tastes like a really strong supercharged ketchup. I'm not a huge fan of that. That is what Neat Paul's is. Very dominant tomato flavor, and I love a good fresh tomato flavor in a sauce. But it is so tart, just so, I don't want to call it irritating, but it's just so out there that 
it, it you have to really balance it out with something sweet, something smoky uh, to really make it palatable. Now, my son, Kevin, he's 13 years old. He's a budding chili head. He's done reviews on my blog before. You know, he's developing quite a palate, but I don't want to attribute it to the kid in him who still kind of <laughs> likes ketchup. He loves the sauce, wants to put it on everything. I'm just not a fan of that really strong ketchup flavor, except for a few different applications. Uh, this, I really wouldn't recommend it too much, uh, like I said, unless you have something else to balance it out. And yeah, you could have good combinations of a seasoning, a rub, and a sauce together. But to me, a good sauce, you really don't need that. So, uh, it, it, this one, I would probably have to say, everyone, you should pass on. Wow, pass. All right. Uh, where can you get it? How much is it? And what size bottle do you get? Okay. You can buy it at natepauls.com. Uh, it comes in a 12-ounce bottle for 4 bucks plus shipping. Relatively inexpensive for a, an online purchase. Uh, and as far as the overall rating, I would have to give us an oven baker. Oh, holy moly, <laughs> oven baker. Yeah. All right. Well, let's quickly take that uh, screenshot of the website off. Forget that. Um, all right. Uh, four bucks, 12 ounce bottle. Uh, NatePauls.com if you want to check it out. Uh, oven baker. So we, uh, we all know what that means. Uh, next item that we're going to be uh, talking about a Jersey, oh crap, Jersey Barn Fire black garlic hot sauce. So this is probably, okay. this. is this the one you're talking about? This is the one I'm talking yeah. about that really, really. Uh, just breaks all the boundaries between a hot sauce, a barbecue sauce, a steak sauce, an all-purpose kind of sauce. It, I love it when sauce makers try things new, try things uh, just completely off the beaten path where you really don't know, well, what should I try this on? And it gives you kind of a sense of adventure in the kitchen or out uh, by the grill. This one, of course, it is billed a hot sauce technically. But it, there are just so much more to it. There's a just rich combination of garlic, onions, tomatoes, just an overall kind of vegetable medley feel to it. And you get the flavor of the peppers in it. There are some kind of hot peppers to it. So if you like things on a spicy end of things, it's not going to you know make you shoot flames out of your ass or anything like that. <laughs> but it does have a spicy edge to it. But the overall rich, dark black garlic flavor – such a great sweet flavor to it. I just happen to love this. And as far as what to put it on, you can put it on anything. You know, I tried it with uh, seafood. And I know when you get some white meat fish, you really want to use kid gloves when it comes to adding flavors to it. You, you, you know, want to ha- apply the flavors very lightly. Just a likely season, light fruit flavors. Uh, normally something like this, a barbecue sauce, uh, something really heavy would be way too much for fish, seafood, shrimp. Not this. It adds just um, the perfect amount of additional flavor to it. Uh, and it's great on chicken. It's great just mix with anything you could find in the kitchen. Uh, it's good as a hot sauce. Now, I wouldn't venture over into like putting on tacos and nachos and things like that to add a little bit of heat to that kind of Mexican food. Use other types of hot sauce for that. Uh, but, you know, when you're talking about grilling, this does it all. I love this stuff. All right. Obviously a big fan. Uh, where can you buy it and uh, how much is it and what size bottle do you get? Okay, you could buy it at jerseybarnfire.com. Uh, it comes in an eight ounce bottle. Very pricey though, at eleven ninety nine per bottle. Uh, I would suggest to the Jersey Barn Fire guys drop the price a couple bucks because you're going to scare off a lot of people with this. That's not even including shipping cost. Uh, really, really expensive to buy. But you know what? If you want something different. I would say either wait till the guys drop the price, hint, hint, or <laughs> just uh, if you happen to have struck the lottery, go ahead and buy a bottle or two. It's great stuff. All right. From time to time, uh, we run into this instance where you're a fan, but all of a sudden the price, you know, that does play a part in anything like it does in life. Mm-hmm. We also use this term on the show uh, between you and I called QPR, quality price ratio. And it seems like that is running the fine line of being okay, but at 12 bucks a bottle, do you find that 
it would be better served at nine dollars or seven dollars or like what if if it was you and your business acumen where would you price point this particular product i would definitely have to say nine dollars or less any more than that then it does good kind of tip the scale into thinking well i probably wouldn't buy it it wouldn't be worth it uh it, i i do love the product quite a bit so again if you have a few extra bucks of splurge go ahead and buy you a bottle uh, give us a rating. A uh, rating I would have to give a top 10 call to. Good All product. Right. Good product. All right. Uh, last but not least, that's uh, Jersey Barn Fire Black Garlic Hot Sauce. Uh, last but not least, Golden Told Cajun Creole Rub. You there? Yep. Oh, it's okay. great stuff. Um, this one is very much on a spicy end of things. A very safe. Savory, very savory. It's not your typical barbecue type rub. Uh, I, I mentioned seafood a while ago. Uh, this does spectacularly on that kind of stuff. Uh, just uh, again, the right amount of kick. If you love garlic, if you love uh, a, a, an Italian herby flavor t- to it, in addition to tradi- in addition to kind of uh, Louisiana style spices that kind of. Uh, Really high end, pungent, just you know, kick them in your mouth, but you still kind of leaves you smile on that type of feel. This is great stuff. Uh, I love to mix this with dirty rice and kind of make my own dirty rice out of it. You know, add a little bit of chicken stock to it. You know, a, a few tablespoons of this. Uh, get some, um, you know, uh, grilled chicken, some chicken thighs. Cut it up. Sprinkle some of this on there as well. Serve it all with that rice. Mm, it, that is a terrific supper. Uh, this is, I wouldn't say anything you should venture to use it on, like pork or beef, but seafood, chicken, uh, about, smoked sausage. What about veggies? It, it's, a, it's a good product for that. What about veggies? What are veggies? Yeah, vegetables. Yeah, I occasionally eat them. Uh, I, I think I ate some last <gasps> year. Last year, oh look at this guy! Yeah, but don't you like um, like I love uh, uh, cauliflower uh, grilled. I love asparagus grilled, peppers grilled. Uh, but and I like to, you know, not just run of the mill. That's all it is. But I like to put some spice on it. So uh, do you think like that would work with a with a it, vegetable? It definitely would work. I, I kid about that. You know, grilled Whoa, don't backpedal just, now, you son of a fantastic. bitch. Don't backpedal. <laughs> Peppers, uh, potatoes, corn, asparagus. I love all that grilled. It, it, and it would do great on that as well. All right. Um, where can you get it? Uh, price and size. You could buy it at Go- Golden Toad. That is Golden Toad. It's for 75 for a 5.5 ounce shaker bottle. A little bit on the price end of things, but I would say it's worth it. All right, and uh, overall rating here for this one. Uh, this, too, is a top 10 call. All right. So we've had a good, good month of reviews. Two top 10 calls, again, in uh, the order of review, Nate Paul's Sweet Barbecue Sauce, uh, which did get an oven baker, and we're running away from that one. Uh, Jersey Barnfire Black Garlic Hot Sauce, uh, which was a top 10 call, and Golden Toad, uh, Golden Toad Cajun slash Creole Rub, uh, which also... I uh, got a top 10 call. Let me ask you really quick. Uh, we were talking about the um, the uh, expositions or whatever, you know, in Texas that are going out. And you said, yeah, you know, kind of shoestring budget. Uh, this is in no way or, or, or does anything compare to the, uh, the, the, the chili uh, thing that Dave DeWitt puts on every year. It's very much like that. Now, what he puts on is a national national fiery foods and barbecue show and out in Albuquerque. That is in early March. Um, that is an indoor event. It's gargantuan or just to that. All these other festivals, they could range from 30, 40, 50, all the way up to upwards of 100 vendors. Uh, how these types of festivals, some will have live music, some will have eating contests. Those are always fun. You know, as a spectator, you know, I stopped being a participant of those long ago. But if you're into that just kind of whole vibe and feel and just seeing what's 
great to eat. I, I, I think all of them are worth a look, uh, especially if you happen to live in a geographic area. Scott Roberts is a blogger, a writer, a voiceover artist. Uh, you can find him at scottrobertsweb.com. And more importantly than that, you can find him here once a month as the official Barbecue Central sauce and rub reviewer. Scott, always appreciate the time, and we will look for you again next month. All right. Thanks, Craig. You got it. There he is, Scott Roberts. scottrobertsweb.com. Also, uh, he is still doing the Firecast. Uh, I believe uh, he has since mentioned that it has gone out of the uh, the weekly endeavor as it uh, initially was panned out to be, but now it's just uh, the fire cat. Rumor has it uh, somebody we know might be on the fire cast shortly. You ever want to hear me get interviewed? Oh, pack a lunch. Before we wrap up this show tonight, I'm going to talk to you about the Barbecue Guru located in Warminster, Pennsylvania. The Barbecue Guru is the automatic pit temperature control device you should reach for. Stop here. This is the company that started it all. They are the creators of this technology. So I would ask, why would you buy one from anybody else? I don't know. Not familiar with how these little beauties work? No problem. I'll tell you on a high level. Imagine a product that allows you to set your pit temperature and once set... It keeps it running at that set temperature all the way through the cook. Sound too good to be true? It's not. This is real life, and you could take advantage of this technology today. Now, maybe you are a busy working professional like me, or perhaps you're constantly on the run with kids doing errands, and quite frankly, you just don't have time to set around and tend pit temperatures. I dig it. The Guru allows you to throw on a pork butt or a brisket or a couple slabs of ribs or all of those, depending on the size of your cooker, and then you're off to do whatever it is you need to get done. And the Barbecue Guru maintains that pit temperature you set it at. There are currently a number of different models to choose from. The most popular ones right now, both ends of the price spectrum, high and low. High-end CyberQ Wi-Fi, raging across the competition trails and so forth. If you have a Wi-Fi connection, you don't even have to get out of bed anymore to check the temperature internally of your meat or the pit temperature. If you want to ramp up or down, you can do it right from the comfort of your smart device, your netbook, tablet, whatever it is. You're ready to go. Or you can do the uh, lower end. $149 gets you the party cube. That fits most cookers. Uh, $10 more of the ceramic styles for the vents at the bottom. Uh, but really, a easiest point of entry uh, when it comes to pit temperature control devices. It runs on AA batteries, and you can take it from cooker to cooker. If you're in the market for a cooker, Onyx Oven is what you want to consider as well. Holds a ton of meat. Accommodates half and full, uh, full pans for food service. Works seamlessly, of course, with any barbecue guru pit temperature control device. So do yourself a favor, head on over to thebbqguru.com and check out their products. If you have any questions about what to order, call them directly. Don't hesitate. 800-288-GURU. That's 800-288-GURU. They'll make sure you're outfitted with exactly what you need to get you up and running right out of the box. Again, 800-288-GURU or thebbqguru.com. Barbecue Guru, a breakthrough in barbecue technology. We are back to wrap the show right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. Big B, New Sound Band, Suburban Boys Weapon. Let's go! I'm an outlaw. Give me two shots. We don't need a radio. Bring a jukebox. Oh, all right, let's try that again. Welcome back to 216 Greg at the Thanks again to Scott Roberts for joining me this past segment. Again, if you are keeping notes and you want to try what he was looking at uh, reviewing tonight, Nate Paul's Sweet Barbecue Sauce. Eh. NatePaul's.com. Like the names. Jersey Barnfire Black Garlic Hot Sauce. Expensive, but worth the buy. JerseyBarnFire.com. And Golden Toad Cajun Creole Rub at GoldenToad.com. Top 10 call as well. 
You can find him at scottrobertsweb.com, scottrobertsvoice.com if you want him to uh, voice stuff for you. He'll voice stuff for you. He's a voiceover character. Um, yeah, I guess that's going to be it. So let's go ahead and wrap it up. All the way back in the first hour, we were joined by Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, for the Ask Dr. Barbecue segment. After that, we talked with Patrick Paquette from the Basic Barbecue team. We finished fifth last weekend or this past weekend in Richmond, and we'll move on to the Sam's Club regional uh, uh, national final. September. Good luck to him. Second hour, we talked with Dave Benjamin from Hotbox Grills, hotboxgrills.com. Truly portable, truly sweet looking, and American made, 100%. Closing out the show, Scott Roberts from scottrobertsweb.com. Uh, a couple things here before we go. Uh, next week, we have a great show. If you have raw cast iron, it's season it each and every time. A little uh, grease, a little Crisco, whatever. Let it burn back in after you've hit it with a grill brush. Let it bake back in each and every time. Generations of rust-free service. Also, September 11, 2001. I will never forget. Until then, and or next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now. <laughs>